Okay, so today I want to talk to you about how to make money as an artist. This is something that I've never really spoken about on video before, but as I've been a professional artist for the past five years, I feel like it's time to just share the knowledge and share what I've learned. You can find all the information I'm about to share with you and more in this book I recently published called So You Want to Be an Artist. It's for aspiring artists, people that have thought about becoming an artist, but maybe haven't taken the leap, and also those that are working full-time and just wanna brush up on their skills and continue to get better as we all do. So, without further ado, with my career, I've mainly gone about making money by selling products, and I sell these products in different ways. I would say that's about 70 to 80% of my income has been from making products and selling them. But turns out, there's a lot of different ways to sell products. So when I refer to products, I'm talking about original paintings, which take a long time for me to create. However, now that I have an established name as an artist, I sell my originals from $1,000 to $5,000, and that's a pretty good markup for the cost of materials, etc. that goes into them, but they do take a lot of time, and they're a higher priced item, so they're not flying off the shelf every day. It takes a special type of buyer to purchase them. So I get all my original paintings photographed by my fine art photographer. If you're looking to start making prints, you definitely need to get that high resolution image or scan of your paintings. So in your area, try to find a professional photographer that can shoot fine art and has that ability to get you those high resolution files. My fine art photographer also happens to create my prints for me. Then I package them up and ship those out. Those are always a great seller, especially in person. Other products I've made are stickers. That's a pretty low margin of markup. And then from there, we pretty much go into merchandise, which I feel like is its own separate category apart from original paintings and prints. And that's things like hats, backpacks with your art on it, t-shirts, etc. And those are all gonna be a little bit higher of a cost to create. If you can imagine a product, you can pretty much put your art on it. So all of this is gonna take a lot of work to get your product set up, your originals ready, prints, etc. So that's why I recommend starting small and starting slow with just some originals, some prints, some stickers, maybe some greeting cards. All right, now let's jump into the different ways to sell your products. Probably the easiest thing to start with would be online sales. This would mean setting up a website and uploading some of your products available like your originals, prints, and putting a little artist bio in. And if you do wanna become an artist, this is a really good idea just to jump on your website now and get it going. So some pros of online sales are that it's inexpensive to open an online store. Personally, I use Shopify. It's only 30 bucks a month, which is pretty reasonable, especially if I sell you know, at least six things, I'm already paying for my subscription. Another pro is that you can run your online sales from anywhere, anytime. Maybe you're working remote, maybe you don't wanna be nailed down to a certain location, so you can be uploading, selling things, shipping things from basically anywhere in the world, which is super nice. Okay, some cons of online sales is there's a lot of competition on the internet and you need to have a way to drive traffic to your website you need a sales funnel. I'm gonna cover this in another video, but marketing is super important, getting your website out there so people know about it, people see your products, and they want to go on your website and purchase them. Another con is that packaging orders is super time consuming, especially in the beginning of my career when my online store started to become popular. I was spending literally hours a day packaging orders, going to the post office, and just dealing with all the logistics, which started taking time away from my actual art and creating. So that was kind of a bummer. However, since I've grown, I've been able to hire someone to fill my orders. So there's always workarounds with these cons, but those are just some things to think about. Another way to sell your products is wholesale. Wholesale means that you basically sell your products to a business or a retail store and they sell your products directly to the customer. One con of doing wholesale is that it's kind of hard to make a profit when you're selling products to wholesalers because basically the industry standard is m marking down your product by 50% of what it would sell for. So if, for example, if I sell a print for $45, I need to charge the wholesaler $22.50, and that is just pretty much how it works in wholesale business. So 
if your cost is higher than $22 on that print, you're ultimately just losing money. So it can be really hard to start out with wholesale when you're a small business. I recommend, again, starting really small with this. Another con is when you're wholesaling products, you make less per sale than you would if it was a direct sale, so a direct customer buying from something from you. Personally, I have some wholesale accounts that consistently purchase products from me every few months, and it's just a nice consistent income to rely on because I know that I don't have to do any extra marketing efforts to get those dollars, and they're just gonna come and order from me so I'm not having to outreach new customers. One thing I'll note is that I never wholesale my originals. Um, that's just something that I save for galleries, which we'll get to next. And I don't think any artist should be wholesaling their originals. This is strictly for merchandise and art products. Okay, next let's talk about gallery consignment. I have currently two galleries where my art is always hanging. And again, a pro of this is it's super nice, consistent income. I get a check every month. Galleries are also a great place to display your originals and potentially sell them to new customers. So this is where I save most of my original paintings for and to hang in. It's a safe place to hang them and buyers are coming into galleries looking to spend more money on art than maybe just the average person online shopping. So it's a great way to sell originals. The same with wholesale, galleries do typically take 50%, which can be a heavy hit. So you've got to price your products accordingly. Another con about galleries is that if you have a piece of art for sale at that gallery, they might not let you have that also for sale online. They just want the only way to purchase it to be through that gallery. So um, you need to have trust in that gallery and believe that they can sell your products. Okay, another source of income to generate revenue off your products are events. There's three different types of events that I've mainly attended. There's festivals, so I went to Thing Music Festival last year and that was super fun. It was tons of people coming for music, but the sales were really good. The, it was summertime, the vibes were high. All right, next there's pop-up shops, so maybe there's a local business doing some sort of uh, fundraiser or event promotion celebration and you're invited to just come set up a table with your art and that might just last a couple hours in the evening. Depending on event turnout, these can be really great ways to just meet people, converse with the public. Um, as a artist loner, it's always good for me to get out and talk to people about my art and just make those connections in person. And then the third type of event would be brand collaboration. So for example, um, 10 Barrel Brewing was doing a summer tour where they were stopping at different local breweries. I got hired to come and live paint at one of the events and I was also allowed to have a merchandise table. If you don't know what live painting is, it's basically where you bring your easel set up and your art and paint as you would in the studio, but you're doing it in front of people. And I have found that at events, having live painting in combination with merchandise makes them more interested in wanting to purchase something. However, if you are live painting at an event, it's helpful to bring someone to run sales and do checkout because it's kind of messy to like hold paint and then put paint down and have to run people's carts. So those are the different types of events. I think that covered a lot of the pros, but a few cons is that say you get invited to an event and the turnout is really poor, you drove all day to get there, you spent money on gas, potentially even a hotel, and then no one shows up and you can't even cover your costs of what you spent on getting to that event. Um, I've only been to a couple events that just are kind of flops, but that is always such a bummer when the event doesn't go well. So I would just be careful what you say yes to, make sure the marketing's good behind the event, make sure it's in a good location, make sure people wanna come out to see you, also do shout outs on your social media and just help promote it to make it the best event it can be. Uh, another thing is like, at different music festivals, the booth fee to just get in can be super expensive. Again, you need to make sure that what you believe you're gonna make out of that event is gonna cover how much that you spent getting there. Lastly, I'm gonna cover that other 20% of my income that doesn't have to do with products, but it's about art licensing. So like I mentioned before, when you do an original, it's really important to get that high resolution scan so that you can have it digitized and that digital artwork becomes an asset. If you're a digital artist, you don't need to get this scanned. You already have the original file on your iPad or whatever. So once you have that digital file, you can sell that file to companies and brands for their own products. So 
An example of this is that I recently had a ski collaboration with LibTech where they purchased two pieces of my art and put them on skis. And this is a great way to just continue profiting off of the assets of the art that you've already created. And one thing I'll note is that it's really important to never sell your copyrights. So that's why we license. We as artists want to hold on to our copyrights because these are assets that can provide for us for years to come. And if you sell your copyrights, you can really never get them back. So some pros of licensing are that it's a really low overhead cost to produce. Um, the, the brand should invest in the product or the marketing scheme or whatever that they're gonna use your art for so you don't have to. Um, you can also use paintings that you've already created or originals you've already created, designs you already created for licensing so then it's no upfront work to you. It's just basically that asset that you're licensing. Some cons of this that I found are that contract negotiations can be a little bit tricky. Brands usually have budgets. They usually have artists that have done things for cheaper than potentially I want to do things. So I've had contracts not go through because of this. It's always just important to assess, is this brand worth it? Is the like kind of relationship worth it? Or should I save this design for a different type of brand and just like hold out and wait for it? Another con is that there's kind of barriers to entry to licensing your art for a decent amount of money to brands. You need to have that personal connection. So networking, it's all about who you know. That's what's important in creating these brand deals. And also the more you grow as an artist and build your reputation, the more brands are gonna wanna work with you. Whew. All right, so I know that was a lot of information, but just keep in mind there's plenty of ways to make money off of your art. Uh, there's a bazillion more ways than I even just mentioned in this video. If you want to learn more about becoming an artist or developing your art career, definitely check out my book that I wrote linked down below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on more artist tips. All right, bye.